Welcome to AutoSense, the world's leading community for ADAS and autonomous vehicle technology development. We create best-in-class events, training, and information for the purpose of connecting the global community of engineers, scientists, and other automotive industry experts. Joining us today from the road on a business trip is Cal Lu, Regional Sales Manager for North America for Linred. Cal, thanks for taking time out of your schedule and being with us. Hey, you're so welcome. So tell us a little bit about Linred and how are you involved then in thermal imaging for automotive? Sure. Linred is a company based in France. Uh, we are a leading provider of thermal imaging sensors that make thermal cameras that people can put into cars and a lot of other applications. And we also have a location in the United States, which is where I live. Yeah, that's right. Thermal imaging, uh, Cal. How can it change the way that we drivers would interact with our environments? Think of uh, thermal imaging as a different way to look at the world around you. So instead of just looking at, uh, you know, through your eyes, looking at the light that's reflected off of things, thermal imaging sees heat. So it reflects heat values. So if, for example, it was totally dark out, uh, you could see just the same as you would if it was totally light using a thermal imager, or if, uh, you know, where you were driving or walking in fog or in smoke or some other obscured conditions. Thermal imagers can see through a lot of that stuff. So you can see things you might not normally see. Cal, have you driven a car before with a thermal camera in it? And if so, what was the experience like? What, what was your experience with the vehicle? I have. In fact, I put one in my personal car at one point. So if you tell somebody what it's like to see in total darkness or when to what thermal imaging is like, it's one thing. But when you're actually behind the wheel, it's very, very different. So driving down... Uh, the street in a cityscape in the dark, you're going to see a lot of things that you wouldn't have seen with your naked eye. You'll see people and animals and, and objects that are either in the road or moving towards the road that you couldn't have seen otherwise. And then driving on highways uh, in country roads, for example, I've literally seen deer and other animals either in the road or approaching the road far outside what I could see in my headlights. And it, uh, it just gives you a little bit more time to be aware of what's coming so you can react better. Cal, as you're explaining that, let's go a little bit deeper. Yeah, what are the different true. applications when it comes to thermal cameras and cars? There are really three kind of primary applications for automobiles for thermal. The first is uh, what we'll call systems or night vision. And in that case, the, you know, the thermal image is actually being displayed for the driver to see, and you can kind of get a visual warning of what's coming or what's going on around you. Uh, second would be uh, autonomous driving or autonomous vehicles. And it's something, think of like a self-driving taxi or something that's navigating the roads by itself. It'd be really nice if it knows there's something alive, you know, in its path to slow down or stop in front of. And then the third would be what we'll call um, AEB systems or automatic emergency braking systems. And that's where it's actually hooked up into the braking system. It can stop or slow down a vehicle before it can get into trouble. With regard to night vision systems, Cal, how many cars are on the road right now that use a night vision system that have a thermal camera? How, how many are out there, do you think? Well, actually, there's uh, pretty good numbers uh, as far as what's been deployed. There are a little over 1.25 million cars on the road that use these things as night vision systems today. The biggest barrier to, to mass adoption, increasing that number. Uh, are there barriers to mass adoption when it comes to thermal cameras? Yeah, that's my concern. There are. I mean, probably two. I mean, the first one is awareness. So if people uh, don't even know they have this option, then you can't ask for it and you can't actually go out and, and, and buy it. But more importantly is cost. So for in the years I've been in this industry, it's consistently been the, the cost of the cameras is too high. So they've been telling us if we can get under $200 for the camera in a car, for example, then the OEMs can sell these things to the to the end users for a reasonable yeah. price. From your vantage point, Cal, what would happen if, say, NHTSA were to change their regulations and they would require that well, AEB no, systems, you mentioned AEB really systems, cool. if NHTSA were to require that these AEB yeah. systems were to work and have increased functionality at, at night or in adverse weather conditions. What's your thoughts on that? It's going to change the whole game. Is realistically, the AEB systems in your car are required by NHTSA, but they don't have to necessarily work at night. So as long as they're saving lives during the day, they're doing their job. NHTSA has been talking for some time about changing the regulations, so they have to work well at night in adverse conditions. So if that happens, then... 
from four years from that point where they make that change, every vehicle sold in the United States have an AEV system that works well at night or in adverse conditions as well. Right. And the net result of that is going to be a mass, just a, a mass adoption like like nothing we've seen yet. So thermal cameras uh, are, are one way to, to meet that regulation. Uh, in fact, maybe the best way. Uh, if you look at cost and effectiveness and, and kind of how quickly they can get into cars, there are other ways to do it, but uh, it's less assured that you're going to be able to see in the conditions we need to. You will be part of our AutoSense Detroit event at the Huntington Place in downtown Detroit in May. Yeah. Uh, tell us, Cal, what can we see firsthand from Linred at the event? Yeah. One of the things I'll start with um, before talking about Linred is uh, in the, the past auto senses I've been to, you get a whole um, industry of people who are looking at this kind of thing. So, you know, some of the people who are putting them in cars will be there. Some of the people who are basically our competitors will be there. And we all come together to show kind of how we can move this forward as an industry. So at our booth, and I invite you to come see our booth, we're going to have an excellent display of uh, putting a thermal camera behind a windshield, which is kind of a cool application. Um, but you get the better visibility, you know, you get the camera more protected than having it mounted, say, in the grill or other places. So in uh, collaboration with a couple of our partners, we'll be showing live demos of the, of the uh, technology behind the windshield. You'll also see kind of the other products that we have to offer in this space. But maybe maybe even more importantly, uh, we're hosting a social event on Wednesday, the 22nd, after hours. And you can learn about that at our booth. But at this at this after hour social event, you'll have a chance to meet a lot of these people in the industry working on it, including some of our competitors and partners. And you'll also be able to see firsthand where this technology can go with even higher resolution. So please do come check it out. Speaking with Cal Liu, Regional Sales Manager for North America for Linred. Cal, I know that you have a busy schedule. You're in the airport right now waiting to catch a flight. So thank you for taking time and for being with us today and for sharing your insight and your thought leadership. I look forward to seeing you in Detroit. But in the meantime, uh, safe travels and we'll see you soon, my friend. Thanks so much, Carl. It's been a pleasure talking to you and I look forward to seeing you in Detroit. Please come see us. For more information on Linred and to find out more about our upcoming events, see the links in the description or visit auto-sense.com. That's auto-sense.com. And for more in-depth interviews like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow AutoSense on LinkedIn. In Detroit, on behalf of AutoSense, I'm Carl Anthony.